Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another Pick a Card reading. Right now we're going to be tuning into the Earth herself, um, looking for guidance, looking for messages from Gaia. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling really nervous right now. And I don't mean like just in, I don't feel nervous about things in general. I just literally right now as I'm standing here trying to film this, I can like, I just, I feel agitated and, and nervous and fl like flighty and scattered. And like, I just, I feel like something is brewing and I don't know what it is. Like I'm expecting a blow from somewhere almost. I don't know. I haven't been able to figure out where that's coming from. So I think, but I, I feel like something to do with this reading, either I'm tuning into somebody's energy who is feeling like really out of whack right now, or there's something, there's like a larger energy pocket, uh, that is really putting me off. And I think we're going to find out what is, what is going on here uh, a little bit. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. So for any of you who are also syncing up with this video and who are also feeling nervous or just agitated and like you don't know quite what's going on or that you can't get grounded, um, we're syncing up for a reason because I'm totally feeling you. <laughs> and uh, so let's get into it. Just pick your pile. It's one, two, three, and number four. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. I sort of see now why I was feeling so, so nervous because the first card of the first pile here is the nine of arrows, which is the, would be the nine of swords in kind of a traditional deck. As you can see, this doesn't quite have the, the nightmare scenario of the typical nine of swords. Usually that is a woman literally waking up from a nightmare and it's all symbolizing psychic attacks and sleepless nights and anxiety all of that and this this so with this nine of arrows all of that anxiety is still there but it's being transmuted if you look at her she is holding her bow but it's almost like she's gonna strum it like a guitar like it's an instrument there's these arrows flying at her it's almost like she's walking through a battlefield but she's taking herself out of the battle she's taking herself out of the fight People are shooting arrows at her, but they're all missing her. None of them are actually hitting her. And instead of fighting back, she is like choosing the way of peace. She is making music with the weapon that she would normally use to kill. This is this is really cool. And the, the subtext here is dedication. And the book describes her as like a spiritual warrior. So it's like taking... I, I feel like you guys are, are... There's some battle that you've been fighting and you're taking yourself out of it you're like this isn't worth fighting anymore like i don't i don't want to keep sitting in this energy of conflict and anxiety and like harming people it's like every you're looking around and everybody else is is fighting and mucking about doing their human conflict thing and you're like no like i am done with it i am so done with it i am waking myself up out of this nightmare and i am transmuting this and i'm gonna like Literally, I don't know how better way to describe it other than this card of walking through a battlefield with everybody shooting arrows at you, but you know, you're like playing the violin instead. <laughs> so really cool because in the middle here, it's the stag. This is like the justice card. Here he is coming to dispense justice and to bring judgment. He's got his axe and his shield and he's this magnificent forest figure. Can you imagine seeing this dude strolling through the trees if you were out in in like primordial forest? <laughs> Just to think of that like gut, like your visceral gut reaction you would have if you saw this dude coming. You would want to make sure that you were on, like you'd want to make sure you had a clear conscience that you had been living your best life because if you hadn't, this dude was going to straighten you out. And I think you guys, uh, I don't think you guys have too much, you know, to worry about in terms of is is justice going to hurt you? Is this stag going to dispense his justice on you? You know, even if you guys have had a spotted past, I think you've been, you know, re resolving that because look up here. There is only light. There is only light. This card reminds me of 
one of the ways we, if we can get enough perspective, if we can zoom out far enough, we can make sense of why bad things happen to good people. Like why do bad people, why do like evil energies, why do bad things exist? Well, I mean, if the really farthest zoomed out answer to that problem is that they don't really, <laughs> they don't really, because literally everything is only light. We are all aspects of source consciousness. You know, the source of all things is not just the source of all good things. The source of all things is also the source of all things that we think are bad. Think of all of the, you know, evil things you can think of. They're all still originally just light. You know, you can think of, you know, the Lucifer story started as the most powerful of the archangels, the archangel who was the light bringer. And, you know, he goes through this major fall and then he has to have this crazy redemption arc, you know, even if, uh, you know, post, you know, in post-Christian cultures, we think of, you know, Lucifer as like the embodiment of evil as Satan himself. Well, it's like, he's still an archangel. He's still part of source consciousness. So even the most evil thing was originally light. There is only light and everything returns to be light in the end. Um, okay, I got I got into that tangent. Let me try to <laughs> bring it back here. So you're this spiritual warrior. You're like a warrior for light. I feel like even if you've been through darkness, you are now you're like, okay, it is time to like bring everything back to the light. You want to transmute everything so that it, everything remembers that it comes back to like, this is like a redemption arc. Um, I mean, this, this energy can be playing out like within you yourself or with the people around you or just with the general like vibes around you, right? Like these energetic patterns, they can happen inside of you. They can happen with in external figures or just with external energies, right? It'll be different for every one of you. Um, but then we have this card, Mourning. This is the Seven of Vessels. A skull here, all these empty cups. Like a funeral rite. This card is really an invitation to, even though you have gone through loss, you have lost thing, right? You are going through the mourning process. It's really an invitation to go through the grieving process. Um, you know, it talks about how funeral ritual rituals in different cultures, they're all there to help people mourn, to help people go through the grieving process. And, you know, go through the darkness, go through your dark night of dealing with your loss, but then bring it back to the light. Bring it back to the light. <laughs> bring it back to the light, guys, because I, I get that. I totally, I totally understand that there are losses you can go through that you never really fully recover from in this life, but you can get to a point where you can, you know, get up in the morning and continue on. And, you know, you guys watching this, you'll have, you'll be experiencing different levels of grief right now. You know, some of you might be grieving over something relatively small, something over like the biggest tragedy you can imagine, what, whatever it is. Um, need to be allowing yourself to go through the grieving process and remembering to bring it back, bring it back to the light. That's your ultimate goal, you know? And red crowned crane. This card is all about examining loyalties and figuring out what needs to go and what you want to take with you. A lot like this stag. The stag is out dispensing justice. The stag is out dispensing justice. And this woman with the nine of arrows playing her, her fiddle in the battlefield, you know, she is choosing to leave the negativity and the fight behind. She is choosing to leave her life as a, like, you know, her life as a killer behind, you know, archers in battle, they kill people, they're murderers, right? She's choosing to leave that behind. And, you know, she's going to walk ahead as a musician, you know, and as a spiritual warrior. So I, I see this, um, this loyalty thing, this examining your loyalties with the crane as that kind of deal. What energies do you want to be loyal to? For some of you, this could be people. If you have to examine what people you should be loyal to, or even like what places you should be loyal to, what jobs, um, what structures you should be loyal to, but whatever it is, it's what, what energies you need to decide what ones you need to put to bed 
and then you can decide what ones to bring with you into the light and you want to only pick like the highest vibration energies right music right what can you do with your bowstring you can kill people with it or you can make music with it right you can twang it um and then you can create a violin out of that same technology that's probably how you know we made the first string instruments from bowstrings um and then we come back everything there is only light that's what i want you guys to remember going forward that's what that's what the earth that's what gaia wants you to remember going forward even the things that seem the most evil can be transmuted and can be brought back to the light because we all come from source we all return to source really at our essence we are all only light and i think that's all i'd like to say for you guys thank you so much for tuning in i hope to see you again soon hey pile two welcome to your reading you guys are like busting out like major solar plexus and sacral chakra activations like look at this dude this is the sun card the sun of life he is not only standing in front of this blazing sun but he's got this uh like spark of life blazing out of here it shows his heart chakra but since we got we've got the sun we've got this raven over here blasting this yellow and orange light like out of his side of his body and then we have the page of stones the links again with the yellow and orange you guys have been um well i don't think this is you like quite quite yet i feel like this is your potential and this is absolutely where you are going let me rewind the first thing up is <laughs> the mirror this is the card correlated with the hanged man you can see this woman she's sort of like a like a siren um she's you know half serpent down here she's sitting in the murky water she's got this hand mirror in her hand like the looking glass she's gazing into the look at all the reflections we got going on here she's got her looking glass she's got the reflections in the water and she's holding up um this crystal ball which is also you know it, that is also the moon she's holding up the moon so there have been reflections upon reflections upon reflections like a house of mirrors so you guys have been doing some like deep deep soul searching from many different aspects like di diving deep and you learned a lot about yourselves and about how and at the same time you learn about others right you see how yourself is reflected in others how we all are kind of like how humans are constantly projecting their feelings onto others you know when uh i could go um secretly i am worried that i'm fat right and then i think everybody else thinks i'm fat even if nobody else thinks i'm fat uh i think they think i'm fat because i think i'm fat did you guys follow <laughs> you guys know what i mean right when i say like projecting and then you know humans are also always reflecting where we're <laughs> absorbing the feelings of others you know maybe everybody thinks that i am too talkative Everybody thinks I'm too talkative or drive everybody crazy. And then so I start thinking I'm too talkative, even though I don't mind it. I don't think I'm too talkative. I like talking. <laughs> right. So that's not a feeling that I have. It's a feeling I'm absorbing from other people. Kind of a maybe that's kind of a weak example, but that's that's all I got right now. <laughs> I can't. I'm not I'm not feeling feeling examples right now. So you guys know what I mean, right? That's what's been going on. You guys have been like projecting and reflecting both with your external environment and within yourself. Just like I see like literally light like bouncing. Uh just just like crazy 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 through all of these mirrors and reflections so that's been your internal process i feel like you know the hanged man is usually that really static and like like dead and like waiting energy but this mirror at least right now i'm really seeing it as you've been still and doing this like internal work but it's been like mentally quick even if nothing's been happening around you because of all this light we're like reflecting and reflecting refracting everywhere um, but that has been serving you because you have been learning to sing your soul song. Soul song. It was like you had to really look within and you had to parse yourself out. You had to parse all the different aspects of your own personality out. You also had to learn to separate yourself from others. You had to figure out what opinions are yours, what opinions are theirs. You know, it was all of this like reflecting and refracting was helping you figure out, get helping you get in tune with the frequency of your soul. 
So I feel like now that you've had this foundation set of knowing now you now that you know who you are now that you know who you are you are blasting that out like you are ready to step up and like be a leo <laughs> right you're you're gonna like stand in a circle of people and you're gonna be standing like with your best foot forward and shining your light out and not like giving a damn anymore about what other people feel about you because you are confident in yourself and yeah, Gaia is like saying like, yes, you know, this is your time. This is your time, uh, time to step up and be a lynx. And this, so this is, since this is a page card, this is like a new, a new feeling for you. <laughs> this is a little bit of a new experience for you because you probably didn't, in the past you had a lot less confidence, right? But you've been going through this uh, process of, of building up your confidence. And the, the lynx is interesting. I think the lynx is the perfect representation of the page of stones which would be the page of pentacles the because the lynx is you know he's an apex predator he's a you know a cat he's a feline out in the wild who is entirely independent entirely looks after himself can take can you know hunt chase down his prey feed himself you know the mother can feed her 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 kittens the lynxes have kittens or would it be called cubs i'm not sure <laughs> anyway you know the mother lynx can feed her family um, but at the same time, lynxes, you know, they're not lions, they're not tigers, right? They're not polar bears, they're not the, even though they're apex predators, they're not like apex apex predators because they're smaller, right? A bigger cat could absolutely come along and like eat a lynx for lunch. I don't know how often that actually happens, but just, you know, it, there's a little bit of, little bit, I think, of insecurity, you know, just how house cats, they're predators, but they're also prey because they're small, right? <laughs> That's why cats are so nervous because they know that like something bigger could come along and eat them, even though they're ferocious little murdering machines. And I have two cats that I love. This is not talking bad about cats, you know, <laughs> but they are ferocious little murdering machines. Um, but at the same time, they know that something bigger could come and eat them. So it, this is just all to say that don't don't let yourself feel small don't let yourself feel small and don't don't worry about being like putting yourself out there and and being new to this because your central energy here is the sun of life you know even if you feel like you're a small cat you know surrounded by tigers really you have the energy of the sun blazing like out of your heart chakra <laughs> so Either you guys have already done a lot of work on your sacral and solar plexus chakras, or this is an invitation to do that. I feel like some of you are like more still sitting back here in the mirror doing your, your soul growth, and others of you are further over here, you know, already shining your light out like the sun. So figure out kind of where you are on this trajectory and, you know, just keep going forward. And then we interestingly have this Raven card, News. You're going to be receiving messages from the other side, from beyond the veil. <laughs> you know, ravens um, are supposed to, you know, carry messages from from the underworld. So, in this context, I would take this to mean communication from either passed on loved ones, or your guides, or your angels. It depends on your own personal take, your own beliefs and practices, but. I think tuning in to whatever disembodied communication, like non-corporeal communication you engage in, uh, will help you like in this development. I think this is pointing to there's a level of support that you're maybe not tuning into yet. And there's probably been messages coming your way uh, that you haven't noticed. Like maybe you hear thoughts you know you have thoughts in your head obviously right you have you hear your voice thinking in your head throughout the day and sometimes you get songs stuck in your head and stuff like that or sometimes you imagine images and i think you some of you are kind of writing that off as oh that's just my imagination or oh that's just my own thoughts well not always this is something i've really been learning lately that some of the time quite a lot of the time actually those thoughts in my head they're not actually mine they're my guides coming in since i don't typically hear like Claire audient audiently my Claire audience is pretty bad and I don't typically hear 
my guides like with my ears. <laughs> Every once in a while I do, but typically it's just happening inside my head. So I've had to learn to listen to my own thoughts because they're not always mine. Sometimes they are messages from who knows where, right? All over the place. Uh, same thing with those images you get. They're not always just your just your imagination. I would say they're almost never just your imagination. You know, you're picking up on something. You're like tuning into the electromagnetic field and you have messages coming in and you need to pay attention to them. If you are meditating or just even falling asleep and you see a flash of an image, pay attention to that. That is a message from somewhere, from somebody. It's a, definitely at least an impression of something that you're picking up on. It's not just your imagination. That's something you really need to work on slowly and build more and more trust with your intuition. And as you do that, you will find you will start to see your suspicions confirmed. And then the more and more confirmation you receive, the more you can trust your own, um, your own intuition and your own, uh, you'll be able to go, oh yeah, I, now I know that that's a message. I can just trust that because I've had, so, <laughs> I've had it confirmed so many times in the past that now I just know. And that's going to be part of building your confidence. All of this uh, orange solar plexus stuff. You're building up your confidence in your ability to hear your hear your guides, you know, whatever your guides are to you, um, and to stand your own in your own stand in your own energy, and to even just stand there and go like, look, I don't even need any confirmation anymore. Now, when I know that something is like an intuitive hit, now I just know it, because <laughs> part of the sun is not just uh, developing your not just developing your solar plexus with your ability to like stand in your energy and to like be an individual and project that outwards. It's also like the confidence level of that, which is more your solar plexus. So be confident in all that you do guys, because yeah, <laughs> be confident and sing your soul song, sing your soul song, put yourself out there, share it with the world. Because now that you know the frequency of your soul, now, now is the time to shine your light. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. I had such a vibe when I was dealing out your cards, and I only wanted to use three cards for everybody, but you guys got five because they jumped out. And... I remember going like something is going on with the guy with these guys and now I know why the fifth card had to jump out because it is the blasted oak which is the tower so welcome to your tower moment <laughs> but the cool thing about this particular like iteration of the tower energy is that it's not really because this is such like a nature deck this is the wildwood deck it is all about the primordial forest this is the blasted oak this is like a tempest, a crazy storm in the forest. Um, and the, you know, the sacred oak is being blasted by lightning and, you know, shit gone cattywampus. But it is not like the tower crumbling. This is not that tower of Babel where everything has fallen and the foundations are fallen, right? Because the tower is all... This is actually... This is why it's called the blasted oak and not the tower. Because it's... Even though it, it is representing that kind of major upheaval and transition, it is not like the foundations crumbling, right? When the tower crumbles, it crumbles right down to its foundations. This blasted oak, just think of a, of a storm in the forest. Think of a storm in the forest, right? Everything rages, you know, branches get blown around, you know, trees get hit by lightning, catch fire, you know, animals all run to ground. Like, it, and you, it, it's like, it's really, really frightening because it is loud and crazy. It's just a cacophony of like stuff going on. I don't know if you guys have ever been like in a forest during a storm. It's, you know, it is, but there's also something really thrilling about it, right? Not as terrifying as if you were standing on top of a tower and the tower was collapsing because in, in a forest storm, you can weather that out. You can find safety, safety. You can go to ground. You can go into a cave, go into a well built hut. You know, you can be okay. So this is more of a, and of course, you know, no matter what kind of havoc a storm wrecks in the forest, it doesn't, it doesn't destroy the foundation of the forest, right? And then in the next morning, the damage is almost superficial. There's branches everywhere. You know, some, yeah, some trees have been knocked over. Some trees have been uprooted. Maybe there was even like a mudslide, a landslide. Lots of like damage has been done, but it's all like higher up. It's almost, you almost want to say superficial. And of course, uh, some good things have happened in the process. Trees that were hit by lightning, um, started fires, you know, that raged. And of course, that's what pine cones need in order to activate so that those seeds can grow and turn into trees. 
Um, seeds have been blown around everywhere. It's part of the natural process. You know, a forest that never has any kind of natural disasters, it, that's a little odd. That's a little odd. <laughs> so this tower moment of you guys, it's more of kind of a, just like a holy shit, what's going on chaos. But you, if you can tune into it the right way, you can ride it out, you know, like you're watching a lightning storm. It's not, it's not a normal tower moment where your foundations are being ripped out from underneath you. And there is, and once, uh, of course, once the storm passes, now you're in the beautiful phase of, you know, the morning after a storm. Guys, like I was actually in South Korea. I was on, not only was I in South Korea when uh, Super Typhoon Chaba, that was in like 2016. Yeah, wow, well, I guess that was several years ago now. You guys probably don't remember ty Super Typhoon Chaba, but it was like a major typhoon uh, that like came up and hit South Korea. And not only was I in South Korea, I was on Jeju Island. And not only was I on Jeju Island, I was hiking up uh, Halasan, Mount Hala, the freaking volcano in the middle of this tropical island off, off the south of South Korea. And that is literally where I was. We were, we were hiking and it was really, 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 really windy. And I'm like, well, that's, you know, that's cool. I'm hiking up a, a volcano in the South Pacific <laughs> in, in this really windy storm. And then eventually like it's the whole time we were walking down, it was pouring rain, you know, like tropical pouring rain. And I get this email pop up on my phone from the government of Canada, you know, going like travel advisory, don't go to Korea. There's like super typhoon Chaba is like going to make landfall today. And I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? I'm on a mountain in the path of a hurricane, a super hurricane, right? a typhoon. Of course, you know, a typhoon is what you call a hurricane in the Pacific. So, <laughs> so uh, I actually, we actually, it was crazy. We got we got the like last bus back into town. Uh, it was totally like the most jam packed bus I'd ever been on. And I've been on some jammed packed buses, let me tell you. And, you know, we made it back into our hotel. And I remember when I had gotten to Jeju Island, I wondered why all of the house, like all of the buildings were made out of just like super thick concrete and brick. I was like, wow, these like things are like sturdy as fuck. And then I, yeah, that night I found out because the, even though, the typhoon kind of like just grazed past Jeju. It didn't hit Jeju like full on. It actually went on to hit Busan in the south of mainland Korea. And it did a lot more damage there. So, but like the wind was insane, guys. It was the most nutty storm I had ever experienced. But it was also really like exciting at the same time. <laughs> and the next day I get up and I had to go do laundry. So I'm like this foreigner walking down Jeju with like a backpack full of dirty clothes trying to go do laundry. And Man, there was just like palm fronds all over the place. Everybody's out there cleaning up, but it was such a bright. That was my, the whole point of the story of this crazy tangent is that the air was so so bright and so so fresh and just just alive. It was so alive. It was the, and it was the first clear air I'd seen in eight days because unfortunately I went to Jeju Island and it rained and was cloudy and shitty for the whole eight days we were there. And then like the last day we were there, the typhoon hit. Well, we were on the mountain and then like our, and then, yeah. So then we had one day to like recover and <laughs> that was the first sunny day we had. That was the first day of clear, fresh air. The humidity was gone. The sun was out. It was bright and clear and fresh and wonderful. That is the point of this whole rant. You are heading to that, that beautiful, beautiful morning after the storm in the forest. Okay. Now that I have established, <laughs> I think I just spent six minutes establishing the nature of your tower moment. Um, now let's get into the, the, the kind of more details. Here we got let it go. So that tells you right there, right? What are you letting go? What do you guys got to let go? Queen of stones, bear, five of bows, empowerment, king of stones, wolf. So you have the queen and king of stones. That's the king and queen of pentacles. Five of bows, empowerment. This is all about, instead of feeling embattled, like instead of feeling threatened because of the conflict around you, you can actually channel that and 
feel empowered because of it. Exactly like if you're in a storm, if you can tune yourself properly and get over your initial knee-jerk fear, you can uh, watch the lightning storm and it can be fucking awesome. Same thing, if, you ha if you're having to go through a lot of struggles, if you're having to fight a lot of things, you can let that totally tear you down or you can realize how that is making you stronger, that you're going through all of these trials and tribulations because like, look, you're going to come out so much better. It's just like, you know, you go to the gym and you lift all those weights and that sucks, right? If you had to do that for no reason, it would be torture, but you're doing it to make yourself stronger. That's what you're doing. You're empowering yourself and you're coming from this place of major, major empowerment because you are king and queen of pentacles here represented as the bear and the wolf. You, you guys are coming from like a major place of authority and like mastery in your material world. And this is where the tower comes in. This is where your tropical storm, this is where your blasted oak, this is what is coming to be messed up. This is what you have to let go. Oddly enough, guys, <laughs> you have cultivated your your mastery of the material world. You have gone through your lessons. You have really used all of your struggles to cultivate strengths and you have like risen to the top of the mountain. You guys are kind of like king of the hill, right? <laughs> you are there. And, but of course you don't get to enjoy that plateau for very long. Now you have to let that, I feel like you guys have been super independent, hyper responsible, hyper disciplined, uh, just so like really like Capricorns, right? Like you guys are like Capricorns. You're just, you've been working so hard. You have been disciplined in everything that you do. And you've gotten yourself to a place of stability through structure and independence. Like you have done this like yourselves. I think me and maybe with, you know, a couple of people maybe working alongside you, but really like this, none of this was given to you. You guys worked hard and you have really learned to, um, like value your own independence, maybe above other things, but you gotta let that, you gotta let that go. And I feel for you guys, cause this was me. Um, I was like a hyper Capricorn, right? I got five placements in Capricorn. I was, I, and I got myself to the top of that fucking mountain, you know, like Capricorns go from the bottom of the deepest, darkest depths and they climb all the way to the peak, the top of the world. We climb to the top of the world from the deepest, darkest depths of the abyss all the way to the top. And we do it all by our fucking selves with nobody's help. And we do it usually fighting people the whole way. <laughs> like people who, not that we're looking for fights, right? But people like jump out of the woodwork. They jump out of the forest to like attack us. And it's like, why? Why are you hassling me? Just let me get to the top of this goddamn mountain. <laughs> that is my experience of like Capricorn energy. Everybody thwarting you along the way. And so because of that, we cultivate just so, so, so much inner strength, inner resilience, like and determination, but we also end up cutting ourselves off from everybody else because we see everybody else as a threat. We see and we think that our well of power is entirely in our own selves because we've only ever been able, we had to rely on ourselves entirely, right? <sighs> For you guys, that's going to have to be a past paradigm because moving forward, queen of vessels, salmon, salmon is all about they make the ultimate sacrifice, right? They actually, wow, wow, Ashley, they swim from the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean and they swim all the way up river, you know, up, in, up into mountain streams to go back to where they started, to go back to where they were born. And then they, you know, lay their eggs and then they lay down to die all so that their children can thrive, <laughs> can be born and can thrive, right? That is... I wasn't even thinking about the salmon when I talked about Capricorn climbing the mountain from the deepest, darkest depths to the, the top of the world. But salmons make that same journey, but they do it not to get to the top of the mountain. They do it not out of like, actually they, and I only can imagine, right, that they're using their inner resolve, their inner reserves of energy, but they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for others. Here you have honeybee, reciprocity. Honeybees, obviously, all working together, all so, so interweaved, all working for the betterment of the community. So this is pretty clear to me. You guys have a... Uh, before, I don't, I don't necessarily think you guys were like self-serving, but I think you were just self-focused, which I totally understand because that was me, right? I was doing me. I had to do me because Capricorns have to focus on themselves if they're going to get to the top of that mountain, right? 
But what do you do when you get to the top of the mountain? What do you do when you get there? You just have a party by yourself? You just take care of yourself for the rest of the rest of the, you know, the existence of your consciousness? No. I mean, you can do that for as long as you feel like it. <laughs> you can do that until the time is right to change. But eventually, that's just going to become the same thing forever, right? And your consciousness is going to exist for a long damn time. You can't just sit there alone on top of your mountaintop forever. Eventually, you got to come down off the mountaintop and you need to come back to the village and you need to you know, Nietzsche would call this, you know, your down going. It's time for your down going because it's time to share the strength you have cultivated. It's time to share that with others so that they can learn from your strength. They can learn to be like you because you are holding an energy of such accomplishment and such inner strength that it is valuable for other people to simply see that and to simply sit in your energy. So valuable for them. And also you can ask, how can you how can you engage in reciprocity? What can you share with others? How can you use your strengths to help others? How can you give back to the community? How can you tune into your heart space, queen of vessels, queen of cups? How can you be more, uh, more tuned in uh, to your empathy, to your empathic abilities, to your compassion? It is just... It is time to let to let it go, let go your fixation on doing you and time to it's not that you have to we don't want you at all to actually like to to stop being strong, right? Don't don't let go of the resilience and strength it took you to get to the top of the mountain, but now you need to shift your focus and figure out what to do with it. And the answer is, you know, now it's time uh to serve others. Honeybee, channel your honeybee magic, guys. Make like a little honeybee. Work with others to create honey for the good of everyone. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Good luck, guys. But of course, you don't need my good luck. You guys got this. You can fucking do whatever you want because <laughs> queen of stones, you're the bear and the wolf. You guys are like hyper Capricorns. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pile 4. Welcome to your reading. Kind of an interesting message coming in, one that I don't typically tune into. I think you guys are being asked to, like, remember your ancestors or remember your traditions, remember your family, like, remember where you came from. And I think that's going to be really healing for you because you've got this boredom problem <laughs> you've got this four of vessels it says boredom here you can see this lady just you know chilling not not really vibing life too great i feel like you guys kind of don't know where to go next or like you're kind of a little bit dissatisfied with life and you don't know how to like bring enrichment back into it but the solution is here because <laughs> you've got First, you've got remembrance. There's something, obviously something you guys have to remember. And it, it it's a heart of light. Something with a core of light for you guys to remember. And you also got polar bear, which is about your ancestors. About respecting your ancestors and their teachings. So, then you also got king of vessels. Heron. A very, very noble bird. King of bows. Adder. These snakes are here to teach you something. Snakes are always about secret wisdom and knowledge. King of bows. And the bows here represent the wands, but particularly in a way where it because what does a bow do, right? It shoots the arrow out there. So the bows here are representing uh, how you manifest your how you manifest your will out into the world. What are you sending out into the world? How are you going to propel it? And in this case, I mean, for some of you, this could be an internal figure. For a lot of you, I feel that this king of bows, this these adders, these snakes that are here to teach you something, I feel like they're like shooting messages at you. They want you to pay attention and to learn something because they want you to remember something. They want you to pay attention to your ancestors. Uh, so any of you who have like a, a connection to your 
to your culture, to like your roots, this is definitely an invitation to like look back at that. Um, some of you probably, you know, if you live in like, say you live in like Toronto <laughs> and you're just like a white person and, you know, your ancestors came from Europe like 150 years ago or, you know, 100 years ago, you know, your great grandparents, stuff like that came over and you, you know, lost contact, you know, you lost your culture, you lost touch with the old world and you're just kind of sitting around going, well, I don't really have like, I don't really have much of a culture. I don't really have much of a tradition. And I'm, I'm Canadian guys. I'm from Vancouver. And I, I get that, you know, Canadians, we have our Canadian culture, of course, but there's also always that thing of like, you know, what does it mean to be Canadian? Part of our culture is also kind of having less of a defined culture than some other cultures, right? So for people like you guys, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sort of like that, right? Uh, there is an invitation to like maybe dig deep into your past. For example, wow, actually, yeah, for example, uh, my dad's side of the family is from Finland. And literally just this morning, my six, my sister had messaged me with like a bunch of these like old black and white, like, like ancient, you know, family photos of, you know, my great, my grandparents and great grandparents, um, like, you know, pioneering out on the prairies, right on their farms out in Saskatchewan. And then this comes up, maybe, the, <laughs> maybe that's funny. That is a synchronicity. So something about looking into your uh, even even if you can only go back like three generations, even if you can only go back to like your grandparents, um, go back as far as you can into your roots and dig up whatever there is to be dug up. You might be surprised. You might be surprised what you can find. And and my sister just texted me. <laughs> Syn synchronicities. Yeah. So something something about your family, guys. Like some of you might be surprised what you find because you could you could easily go wow like. Um, I've always been interested in witchcraft, for example, or I'm not saying me personally, I'm saying somebody in, in an example, although I mean, I am interested in witchcraft, but I'm not a witch. So somebody could be, oh, I've always had this nagging interest in witchcraft. And then you dig into your family roots and realize, wow, there were like all these witches <laughs> in my family, right? So take a look, go digging into your roots. I mean, if you feel called to and see what you can find. I think that would help alleviate some of this boredom. And there's definitely a figure in your, there's something to be learned, something to be learned from this. And there's also love to be found. Remember, some of you might be kind of estranged. I mean, I've been talking a lot about being estranged from your roots. And, but some of you might be estranged from like the family that is still alive right now. Um, I would take this King of Vessels as an indication to... I mean, this is tough, right? Because a lot of the time it is not worth it, in my opinion, to go like patching up family problems. Some some family problems are better left, like just take everyone should just take them to their graves. Um, I know this from my own personal experience with my family where, man, I can't even like get into it. But suffice to say, I have a very large extended family and there's been a lot of trauma and drama in the extended family. My nuclear family is good, but my extended family is like nuts. And a lot of like severed ties. And every couple of years, somebody gets a hair up their ass and decides like, I'm going to go patch things up with so-and-so. I'm going to go try to make contact with them, even if they haven't seen each other or talked in like decades. And even if when there's really, really bad, bad blood and it's like, come on, like, don't do that. You're just going to be digging shit up. Nobody wants to go there. These people aren't going to, haven't changed, you know, <laughs> it, all you're doing is reopening old wounds. So if you got really like, you guys have to, you, you guys will know, right? If it's better just to let, let it lie than let it lie. But some of you, especially if there are problems more with your nuclear family, you know, especially, especially with siblings, I feel like sibling relationships can be patched up. Um, usually in some kind of more of effective way, you know, or with, with your parents or with your children, those relationships, it might be, it might be, you have to decide. It's going to depend on you guys, but it might be worth it or at least beneficial for you to take like the high road to be the bigger person, so to speak, and to find your compassion, to find your understanding and to be willing to put yourself out there and to be willing to initiate some difficult conversations, uh, kind of in order to bring everybody back to bring everybody back together. Uh, if you can do some family healing. Two of vessels. Attraction. 
some of you might be like soul family, like actually soul family with your physical uh, human siblings. I, I'm actually, yeah, in this context, I'm totally, this is, I mean, this could be a romantic thing, but I'm feeling soul family from this, not, not like, you know, romantic partner. And this is, I think, the best sign that some of those broken bridges can be healed if you guys think it is in your best interest and their best interest in order to do it. Heal, yeah, this is, this is like a family healing spread. This is very interesting. For some of you, I think it, it is a digging into your ancestry, which will help you not only heal yourself, but also heal your ancestors. I know it's weird to think that we can heal our lineage like back in time, but we can. The work that you do right now <laughs> will literally heal your ancestors as they are disembodied because really everything is happening all at once, right? These tunnels that we go through in our human linear experience are just that. They're just like tunnel vision, right? Everything is kind of happening all at once and everything is growing and changing on a much more like omni-dimensional level. So you can absolutely heal your ancestors back in time by doing inner work now, by doing healing work now. In fact, they're watching you and cheering you on and going, yes, like, please help us. Please do this for us because you can, if you heal yourself and you can heal back into your lineage. For others of you, this is going to be more like real time where you can heal, you can reach out and repair bonds of love with family this could be friends too if you if you guys have like you know if your friends are your family right this is all this is just these are just human words i'm putting to these energies you guys, guys kind of have to navigate uh where that leads you and i'm being really really vibing pulling you guys some moonology cards i didn't expect to use this deck really at all anymore i actually felt like retiring it retiring it but it doesn't want to be retired <laughs> it keeps wanting to come back out for more <laughs> you're very close to achieving your goal gibbous moon that's a good sign that what are you i mean it's self-explanatory right that's the nice thing about this deck whatever you guys have been working on it's almost done so I would take that as to be a very auspicious sign that your these wounds can be healed. A fiery climax approaches, full moon in Aries. Uh, same message. Things are almost hitting a culmination point. Guys, maybe you've been working on this healing for a while and it is like you're just about to hit some kind of like a breakthrough. One more card. Meditate and contemplate new moon in Pisces. There you go. The healing can take place in meditation. That's, of course, where we go to do inner work. And the more, you know, meditation we do, the more inner work we do on ourselves, the better you'll be able to embody the king, this hair and energy, this king of vessels, and the more able you'll be to go out and heal your ancestors, heal your lineage, or bring to your physical family back together. You can do that by looking within first. And there we have it. I don't think I'm going to say any more on this. So good luck with healing your bridges, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again soon.